Hey guys, welcome back to the main event, Daniel. And uh, yeah, tonight we're going to find out who the main eventer of 1987 was. Had three pay-per-views, three main events, and three nominations for this for this thing. So let's do it. Uh, well, you know, could it be Hogan? He's already won two of them before. However, unlike 1986, he actually has competition this time. And, of course, uh, we actually got uh, somebody from NWA this time as well, so represented from the NWA. It's not Ice Cube. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. The uh, nominees are uh, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, and Ric Flair. So, like always, I'll give about the third place, runner-up, and then the main eventer of 1987. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and start it off. Third place goes to... Ric Flair. I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. I know I will. Just hear me out. Uh, the reason I'm picking Ric Flair, because once again, you know, it is not, I'm, I'm going based on what we have seen, you know, main event wise, or what we've covered so far on this show. Now, don't get me wrong, I got, now, a vast majority is that, you know, how they did in the main event, you know, whatever. But then, you know, the other, like, you know, 10% would be like, you know, what that led to, you know, what impact did that have, not just on their careers, but then, you know, wrestling in general. So, um, you know, it, I incorporate that as well, but for most part, I'm looking at, you know, these three matches that we had, you know, pay-per-view matches in 87, and that's it. It's all I'm looking at. So, just based on that alone, Ric Flair goes third place, just because, A, I'm sorry, you know, it, compared to, you know, that main event compared to the other two, it is ranked third. It wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. It was hard hitting, fucking cage match, fucking brutal. But come on, it goes third. The other thing is, you know, okay, look at, you know, okay, these three people: Andre, Hogan, and Flair. Icons, like without a doubt, fucking icons. Uh, you know, you always hear like, you know, who'd be on your Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling? These three would be on there without a bat of the eye. You'd be like, yeah, no, no, I believe it. I believe that these three made that list. So, we I mean, you get Hogan and Andre feuding in WWF right now, and those, you know, two of, the, two, two of the three matches are these two guys doing that shit. You get Ric Flair on the other hand fighting with Ronnie Garvin. Now, there's no disrespect against Ronnie Garvin. I'm a big Ronnie Garvin fan. Like I said before, rugged Ronnie Garvin. I love that run in WWF. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just saying you would never hear that. Like, who's in your Mount Rushmore of, you know, professional wrestling? I'm not... No disrespect, but you're not going to hear Ronnie Garvin make that list. I'm sorry, you're just not. So, with that in mind, that's kind of where I'm going. I'm like, well, I got to pick. I got to pick the main inventor. And don't get me wrong, Flair will probably make the list at some point. I mean, he's got good matches coming up. Uh, you know, dude's been around. He, you know, he's, he wrestled for a long time. So, I can't imagine him not at least getting that shot, or at least making it hard on me like to make a choice. I'm just saying right now, in 1987, he did. So third place, Ric Flair. All right, runner up, Hulk Hogan. What? What? Oh, dude, the crowd's going crazy right now. Disbelief, disbelief. I'll be honest with you. I didn't think he was going to. Uh, before, you know, when I do these main events, I kind of get the schedule out, see, you know, in each year what I'm going to be reviewing and everything. It's been easy so far because there have been a whole lot of pay reviews. But I'm looking at them, I'm like, okay, these are the three, and I'm looking at, you know, the matches, and then, you know, I already know who won them and everything, and I'm just like, well, Hogan, obviously. I mean, the guy won, you know, the biggest, you know, even at the time, and if not today, the biggest WrestleMania main event of all time, Hogan won that. So that should automatically be like, yep, he gets to go. But I haven't watched these matches in years. Years. Sorry, I lose my voice a little bit. I cracked a little bit there. I haven't watched these matches in years. So... Whenever I, you know, I rewatched him, I, I forgot that like Hogan gets his ass hand to him, like ninety percent of that match. Like seriously, it is like an Andre squash match. Like Hogan just gets his ass completely dominated for a vast majority of that match, and then comes up with a, a lucky win. Now I know that's all, all that matters is the fact that hey, you win, that's it, boom, the W is all that matters. And you know you're right, it does, but still, yeah, it's like. Mm. Didn't, didn't quite get that, did you? And I was like, all right, look at the next match they have, the Survivor Series Elimination match, and dude, Hogan loses by count out. This is by count out. Is this hard for me to be like, mm. And so I'm sitting there thinking, 
and I'm looking at you know, all the evidence in front of me here, and I'm like, you know, clearly, now, I've said this before, and I, and I stand by it, and this is just an opinion, this, this is my opinion, uh, there's no fact, you can't look this up, but to me, Hulkamania peaked at WrestleMania 3. That is the highest point that Hulkamania was running wild. Now, not to say that that decline was rapid. It didn't just, you know, uh, uh, no, no, no. Because his popularity would go at least until, like, 91. I mean, you know, it waned a little bit, but for the most part, he was still fairly popular. For fuck's sake, he did Suburban Commando. It went to about 92 or so that he started kind of really suffering a little bit. And at that point, he was kind of going part-time anyways, it felt like. And then, of course, you know, he'd be out of the company within a couple years. But up until that point, you know, it, there is a, a bit of decline. And you, I get the feeling that around this time, probably, Survivor Series, I should say, uh, going into to, or, uh, 1988, that it was pretty clear that they were wanting to maybe put the bell on somebody else and try to hopefully push somebody to maybe take it to the next level. Um, you know, they tried it with you know Savage, they tried it with Warrior, and no one ever could quite match Hogan. At all. They just should try. They definitely tried. Every time he would pass that torch off or, you know, whatever, hand a baton off to, you know, to the next guy in the relay, or the relay race. Sorry, get my tongue tied here. Uh, every time, you know, they put the bell on someone else, they did all right with it, but it was they, it never quite matched the Hulkamania. And, of course, they'd always go back to Hogan. And this would continue. And even up until he left the company, no one quite ever became, like, that face of the company until he left. Like, he had to leave completely before they was like, alright, now who do we got? So, but the fact that they were clearly trying to get it away from him was not just, you know, just, it, it's just obvious, like, okay, it's, it, it's, 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 it's his time. He's, he's winding down. Now, I'm not saying, like, this is going to be the case from here on out. You know, he's had good matches coming up, great years ahead of him, but I just feel like an A7, Oh, can't, can't get to him right now. And I'm going to give you a little bit more on that as I get to the, the guy. So for right now, run, the runner-up, Hulk Hogan. So that means the main eventer of 1987, Andre the Giant. And to now further you know, illustrate my point here and to elaborate more on my choice. Okay, so you know, Hogan, you know, he did his thing. He, he, you know, and it's, it's winding down a little bit. But look at his opponent now. Now he's up against Andre the Giant. Now, look at the opponents prior to Andre Giant. Alright? With the exception of maybe Piper, which even that didn't quite go forever and ever like people would like to think it did. For the most part, Hogan would get in the ring, stomp their ass, and then guess what? Like, they would, this is how it went down. He'd get in there, and like, he'd be fighting somebody, and they would get that brush of the spotlight. You know, and they're like, oh, I'm in the main event. But then Hogan would stomp them, big boot, leg drop, and send their ass back down to the mid-card every single time. They all did that. Until he got to Andre. Andre's the only person you could not do that to. Now, granted, Andre was already, like, main eventer before he even touched Hogan. He was already super popular, and this was, like, the first almost time where you almost felt like he could beat Hogan if he wanted to. Like, literally, it, 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 you... You know, even though they built Bundy up pretty good as a credible threat, this is the first time you're just like, you know, Hawkman could be in trouble. And I think it's the fact that, like, you know, he beat Andre. And you could, you almost suspect, like, well, now Andre's done. And the fact that he was getting close to retirement or wanting to retire or whatever, and it's just like, okay, well, he's done. But he wasn't. No, he didn't get sent packing down the mid card or get sent packing down the company. No, he comes back and keeps coming back. And keep coming back. And become like Hogan's first big nemesis. Like seriously. And not just that. But Hogan never quite got that one-on-one -on -one victory over uh, Andre after this. Like WrestleMania 3, he beats him. Right? You go to Survivor Series, which I know wasn't one-on-one. -on -one, but whatever. Survivor Series, there's no retribution there. Because you know he doesn't get the you know, win again. Because he gets counted out. They fight the main event for the world title. Andre wins. Now, Grand Shenanigans was there, but guess what? Andre wins. Takes the title off of Hogan. The next time they meet, WrestleMania 4, it ends in a double DQ. The next time they meet at SummerSlam, wins the Mega Bucks versus the Mega Powers. Sure, Mega Bu or I'm sorry, Mega Powers wins, but Hogan doesn't pin Andre at all. 
And granted, I mean, eventually they do just kind of move it on. I mean, it's like, you know, Hogan does win the feud, but it's like he never quite got that satisfying, you know, win over him again. And like I said, that first win, growing up, as epic as it was, I'm not, I'm not taking nothing away from that win. It was awesome. He fucking slammed him, dropped the leg, it was glorious. But the match itself, it was just like, dude, it was Andre. It was all, and you get the feeling that if Andre honestly was like, you know what, I'm not, we're not playing this game. I'm beating Hogan. He could have done it. He could have fucking done it right then and there. I was saying, to me, in 87, it was Andre's year. Hogan, who has been riding high for fucking ever now, fought him against somebody who he couldn't knock off the, you know, the, the pedestal. And Andre kept coming back, and, and this is all building to his title run, which was less than 30 seconds. But still, it, it, it's leading to you know him, him winning the title. Being immortalized on that list of world champions. So, much like that list of world champions, I'm going to immortalize him. I'll put him on the list of main eventers. He joins Hogan up there right now. Hogan has two of them. He, he won 85 and 86, and 87 goes to Andre the Giant. So, uh, do you guys agree or disagree? Let me know. Who do you think was the uh, main eventer of 1987? Drop that comment down below. And, guys, uh, tune in next week. Next week, we'll be going back to the NWA, 1988. We're starting it back up. And, uh, yeah, Bunkhouse Stampede. Man. I, you know, I, I'm giving NWA a fair shake, but I'm just seeing some of these matches. I'm just kind of like, oh, man, I got to sit through this shit. Uh, but, hey, you know, we'll wait and see. Who knows? It might surprise me. It might surprise me. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.